What do you think is the most challenging thing about living full time in an RV? You thinking of what, what came to your mind right now? Write it down. I want to know. There are a lot of challenges to living full time in a vehicle, living a nomadic life. And I've talked about those over the years. Maybe you're in the planning stages of a nomadic life. Maybe you're just getting started. Maybe you've even been on the road for a while and you're struggling with figuring out how to thrive living on the road. So today I have seven tips to help you not only survive, but to thrive living in an RV. And you're going to want to stick with me to number seven because number seven is huge. So let's get started. Ain't nobody gonna do it for you. you got to find your own. But first, just a quick reminder, I still need to sell, I think it's 14 calendars. I need to sell 14 more calendars. This is the 2023 calendar, high quality, great pictures of my travel so that you can dream with me all year long. Click the link in the video description below. You do not have to have PayPal to order this and we're also shipping internationally. So go ahead, click the link below. Help me sell, what, what did I say? 14 more, I think it is. So help me sell. 14 more. All right, so let's get started. My first tip for thriving on the road is to dodge the boredom. Believe it or not, RV life can actually be pretty boring for a lot of people, especially those people who don't work anymore. I, over the years, I've heard from so many of you who are like, how do you deal with boredom? What am, what am I supposed to do all day living out there in the middle of the desert or in the middle of the forest by myself? Boredom can be a real issue if you don't have all the distractions that you're used to having in a traditional life, especially if you've raised kids and you have all of the distractions that come with raising kids and raising a family and all the distractions of going to the store and the busy hustle and bustle life. So boredom can definitely be a reality for some people who are either on the road or thinking about getting on the road. And the thing is, long-term boredom can actually increase your risk for an early death. So it's really important to keep your mind and your body active and not let the boarding the boredom sit in. Boredom can also lead to an unhealthy body, un, unhealthy behaviors, uh, eating bad things. A lot of us, I eat out of boredom. You know, eating out of boredom, sitting uh, sitting down too much in front of the TV too much. So it's really important before you get on the road to figure out some hobbies that you're going to do on the road. It's really important to find ways to keep your mind and your body engaged in life and not just be a passive observer of life, even on the road. And that might mean finding some hobbies, right? Geocaching is one of my hobbies that I do when I have time. It's a simple app you download on your phone and you can walk around the wherever you are and find these little treasures. It's like a treasure hunt and it's a free app on your phone and that might be one thing that you can do. Maybe you want to knit, you know, maybe you want to crochet, maybe you want to paint, maybe you want to draw, maybe you want to write. Whatever your passion is, I think it's really important to find a hobby and try to participate in that hobby, at least sometimes, like I said, because you don't want to be bored, you don't want to let your mind go to waste, and you just want to keep engaged in life in some way. That's my first tip. You want to dodge the boredom. My second tip is to avoid loneliness. A lot of people assume that solo nomads are the ones who are suffering the most loneliness on the road. But as someone who was married for 13 years and in a relationship with someone we didn't have a lot of outside friends, you can also be very lonely as a couple and within a couple. So just because you're in a couple, don't think that this doesn't apply to you. You can be just as lonely or even more lonely than a lot of solo people. You know me, I, I don't get lonely a lot in my solo life. I happen to enjoy being alone, but it is still important. And it took me seven years, maybe six and a half years to realize this. It is still important to know when you need company. Uh, my therapist has been reminding me for years, humans are social animals. We need human interaction. And it took me a long time to find my people, to find a group of friends that I enjoy hanging out with. And, and that's fine too. It may not be something that you need right away. But for me, human interaction, I got enough human interaction by just going out and running my errands. And I do a lot online too. So that really helped. But they may not be for everybody, whether you're solo 
or whether you're in a couple, it's really important to avoid loneliness. I think even in some ways more so in a couple. I don't know. I think that sometimes we use our partners as a crutch. You know what I'm saying? And it's as an excuse, maybe even, oh, you know, I have my partner, so I don't need to put myself out there. I don't need to meet other people. But I think it's really important for everybody coupled or not, to avoid loneliness, to find people who share your interests, that share your passions, your beliefs, values, or whatever that is. And a couple good ways that you can do that is to get involved. Do some volunteer work. Even if you're traveling around, you could call a local shelter or a local nonprofit and say, hey, you know what? I'm in the area for a while and I just would like to volunteer my services, doing anything you need me to do. Great way to get out, get active, break the boredom, um, and help with the loneliness if you're feeling lonely or isolated. So volunteer work is one way. There are also uh, HAWA, and I'll put a link to that below, Cheap RV Living's nonprofit, Home on Wheels Alliance. They're always looking for volunteers, so that might be a way to do it. That way you're also meeting other nomads. So there are a lot of different ways that you can meet people on the road. Oh, and meetups. You can do meetups. That is also going to help you stay active and to stay involved and to stay engaged with people outside of your nomadic life. And if you're not familiar, Meetup is a free app. You can also do it online. And it is people who have interests organize these groups based on interest and people get together. I've done hiking meetups, backpacking meetups, and it's, you know, you, you meet people with shared interests and they have everything from hiking to tennis to cooking to uh, support groups, and I even saw one for like nomads with disability or with diabetes or something like that. So it's a free app. Go check it out, and you can find events in your area wherever you are. So a lot of these are going to be location independent, and you can meet new people in every location that you go. So it's really important to do what you can to avoid getting lonely because loneliness isn't good for us either. My third tip for surviving and thriving on the road is to avoid as much stress as you can when you're traveling with pets. Traveling with pets can be very stressful. Not only are you having to take care of yourself, but you're having to take care of the needs of your pets. They're having to get vet care. They're having to eat right. They're having to get enough exercise. And the biggest challenge that many pet parents have when they're living in an RV and traveling is what to do with your pet when you want to go sightseeing, when you have to run in errands, go to the dentist, get groceries. That can be a really huge stressor for any pet parent living on the road. So that's why I recommend the Waggle. The Waggle Pet Monitor has been such a lifesaver, literally, and peace of mind. And in case you're not familiar with Waggle, Waggle has been a sponsor of this channel for a long time. And people who are buying Waggle, who live on the road, absolutely love it. So the Waggle Pet Monitor, this is a monitor. It stays inside the vehicle when I'm running errands and it works with an app on my phone. And you do have to pay a monthly fee for the app in addition to the Waggle, which by the way, I'm gonna tell you in a minute how to save 50% off on this. And it works with an app on my phone. So it sends me, you can have it set up to either email you or text you real-time updates about the what's going on inside your RV when you have to leave your pet behind. Real-time temperature, real-time humidity, real-time heat index. It'll also tell you if you've got this plugged into a power source, it'll also tell you if your power goes out. So even if you're plugged into an RV park and you're out running errands on a hot day and you're worried that your air conditioning is going to go out, the Waggle Pet Monitor is going to tell you that your power went out and okay I need to get back home because my pet is no longer safe inside my RV. The Waggle Pet Monitor has given me such peace of mind living on the road with Sadie and the nice thing too is this comes with its own Verizon 4G signal so it doesn't matter what what cell carrier you have on your cell phone. This has built-in Verizon to talk to the app on your phone so you can have AT&T, you can have T-Mobile, whatever you have on your phone, this Verizon signal, which by the way is one of the most consistent signals across the country. It's my number one uh, cell service now. So you can be pretty much guaranteed in any populated place that you're going to want to leave your pet in the vehicle while you do your thing. 
you can be pretty much guaranteed you're going to have a reliable cell signal that's going to be reliable enough to keep your pet safe. So whether it's hot or cold outside or you just want to know what's going on while you have to leave your pet behind, you like I said, you can set it up to get alerts, but you can also just check in on the monitor anytime via the app on your phone to see what's going on inside your RV. And as a sponsor of this channel, Waggle is now offering you a full 50% off the Waggle Pet Monitor when you you use the link in the video description below and enter discount code Sadie 50 this sale isn't gonna last long so hurry and get your waggle pet monitor today because I'm telling you if you want to survive and thrive living in a vehicle and you have a pet this is gonna just it's gonna change your life it really is so that was number three how to reduce stress while you're traveling with pets my fourth tip for thriving on the road living in an RV is beating road fatigue. Road fatigue is real, y'all, okay? <laughs> you know if you've been with me, I've done two cross-country trips in the last two years, and it takes a lot out of you, especially if you're traveling solo because you're doing absolutely everything yourself. You're doing all the driving, you're doing all the working, you're doing all the shopping, you're doing all the setting up and breaking down. It can be freaking exhausting. So it's really, really important to prepare if you're gonna be traveling a lot. And my best tips for reducing road fatigue is to know your limitations and listen to your body. You have to know your limitations. You can't know that you get tired at three o'clock and don't want to drive anymore and leave at one o'clock and plan on driving 600 miles. You have to be realistic and honest with yourself. Know your limitations. Know when you get tired and plan accordingly. So my best practice is for trying to reduce road fatigue and you all watch me you know I'm a work in progress and sometimes I don't follow my own advice but my best tips for trying to reduce road fatigue you're not gonna be able to eliminate it I don't think you're ever gonna be able to eliminate it stuff happens you travel when you live on the road as a nomad and you're gonna encounter it but my best tips for reducing it and and learning to manage it is number one is to limit the number of miles I drive Okay, I just know I'm not driving 500 miles a day. I mean, I'm lucky some days if I get 200 miles and that still takes me all day. Limit the number of drives, miles you drive. Stop early. If you're a morning person like me, I lose energy. I've known this for a long time. I, my energy severely declines after three o'clock. I don't want to be on the road and I certainly don't want to be out on these crazy roads searching for boondocking too late in the day. So for me, knowing myself and being honest with myself about my limitations, I know that I have to get an early start. I like to be on the road by 10 o'clock usually at the latest depending on how much traveling I'm doing that day. And I know that if I'm on the road that early, I can stop before I get my big energy decline, right? My big energy dips. And the third thing that works for me to uh, try to manage road fatigue is taking a lot of breaks. And that's part of the reason it takes me so long to drive 150 miles. And plus I have Sadie, I have my dog, you know, she wants to get out. She wants to explore. She needs the exercise. So taking a lot of breaks, those are my best practices for trying to manage road fatigue. But that is a reality that you're going to have to face and you're going to have to decide what's best for you for managing that. My fifth tip for surviving and thriving on the road is making sure you eat well. A lot of people get into RV life and van life and their diets go down the drain. Pre-packaged, prepared, canned food. For one thing, I've talked about this, a lot of people think it's really um, cost prohibitive to eat healthy and that is absolutely not true. I've talked about that in other videos. And sometimes the best way to ensure that you're not tempted by the pre-packaged, the fast food when you're on a travel day is to plan ahead. I try to always have healthier or healthy-ish meals that I can make on the fly, that I can whip up really quick on one of my travel breaks. Uh, on a long travel day, I like to have things in the freezer or a big pot of soup that I made a couple days ago that I can just scoop out and have for dinner. So the best way to make sure you eat as well as you can is to plan ahead and make sure you've got healthy alternatives on board. Because we all know when you're hungry, when you're 
you're tired, when you're stressed, the first thing you want to do is reach for the sugar in a lot of cases, or even the, the fast and easy, right? The, um, the fast food, which is not good for you. And when you're not eating well, everything else kind of, at least for me, when I'm not eating well, my, it affects my mood, it affects my body, it affects my physical, how I feel, it affects every, my thinking, even my thinking. So I know for me, in order to stay as healthy as I can, I need to eat healthy food. And when you're living such a uh, a life that can be very stressful and very uncertain, taking care of yourself is extremely important so that whenever the road throws a challenge at you, you're at your best or at least close to your best. You're certainly not at your worst. So eating well is my fifth tip for managing life on the road. And, and number, number seven, seven, dealing with uncertainty. You need a plan for dealing with uncertainty. When you're living on wheels, when you're living in a vehicle, you are definitely absolutely going to deal with uncertainty. You're going to get a flat tire. You're going to break down. You're going to drive an hour out of your way to go to a campsite that you saw on freecampsites.net that is closed and gated off so you can't sleep there. I had friends who actually booked a uh, campground uh, on en route. They were like an hour away. They booked a campground to because they had a long travel day. They got to the campground and the gate was closed. The gate closed at five o'clock. They actually talked to somebody, booked their reservation, and nobody told them the gate was gonna be closed at five o'clock. So you just never know. There are no guarantees whether you're booking a campsite or boondocking. The road is just gonna throw every wrench at you that you can imagine. It's up to you, again, be honest with yourself about your ability to handle the obstacles in the heat of the moment that are going to come at you how how do you handle stress how do you handle uncertainty are you the type of person who curls up in a ball and cries and and goes to bed for three days and can't do anything that's something you're really going to have to be honest with yourself about before you hit the road because it's going to happen everything is going to go wrong you're going to have days when absolutely everything goes wrong and if you're not the type of person who has the tools to manage everything going wrong in uncertain, you're not in the safety of your house. You don't have a safe place to go if everything in your day goes wrong like you do if you live in a six and bricks. Sure, you have your vehicle, you have your home, but where are you going to park it? So it's really important to have a plan to know that uncertainty is an inevitable to know that everything is going to go wrong and it's really important to have a plan if you are a planner everything you do you're going to have to have a backup plan you're going to have to have a plan a you're going to have to have a plan b you're going to have to have a plan c and sometimes you're probably even going to need a plan d so if you're a planner just know that you're going to have to plan ahead if you're more spontaneous i think those of us who are a little more spontaneous and can really roll with the punches and work really well under pressure i work well under pressure i might melt down for a minute but then i'm like okay i gotta go you know i keep crying what's crying gonna do you know i might need to release some tears but uh for those of us i think who are a little more spontaneous i think it might be a little easier but even then I'm going to tell you, there are days, there are days. I think some, most of the time I'm pretty easygoing and can go with the flow of, of my life, but there are days. So just know that and plan for it and prepare for it. All right. So finally, my seventh tip for not only surviving, but thriving on the road. Are you ready? Before we do, do me a favor. If you're still here and you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below. It really helps me out when you subscribe to my channel. Also, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. All of those things also help my channel grow. So even if you think you're subscribed to my channel, Every time I don't say this, I, I see a change in my subscriber numbers. Even if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because YouTube unsubscribes people, I guess. I don't know. I hear it every single time. Thank you. Finally, it's my seventh tip for thriving on the road is to always, always, every single day without fault, practice self-care. Again, 
I'm, I, I don't always practice what I preach. And when I forget to practice self-care, it affects everything. It affects my mood. It affects my body. It affects my decision-making. It affects my ability to deal with stress on the road. It is extremely important to remember every day to practice self-care. Maybe that means starting the day with some yoga, some stretching, going for a walk, meditating, praying, if that's what you do. It's really important to recognize what you need to be a happy, healthy, well-balanced individual and practice whatever it takes to make you that happy, healthy, well-rounded individual every day. Mental health, physical health, making sure you're getting enough exercise. And even if you are suffering from disabilities, there are definitely ways that you can get exercise when you live on the road. So just make sure every single day you find little ways, even if it's a busy day, do not forget to take care of yourself first. That is going to be the number one key to making sure you thrive living on the road. All right. I hope you found this helpful. Leave your tips below. What tips are do, do you have for anybody who is on the road or thinking about getting on the road for thriving in an RV life? And if you're not on the road yet, if you're just watching this video, which tip did you find most helpful? Just leave the number below. Number one, number two, number three through seven. Which tip did you find most helpful or most did it resonate most with you? Again, thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate each and every Every one of you and I will see you next time in the meantime be happy be free and be kind see you soon